Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be doing a little uh, review overview of the PMOS intake for the 2015 to 17 Mustang. Now this is a supercharged application that I have here. As you see, uh, I'm missing the lid, which is floating around here somewhere. But the reason why I took it off, because it was just holding in by these little wimpy push pins. And it's clear anyways. And it's clear anyway. And you also think, all right, so let me start from the top here. I supercharged the car a couple years ago, as you guys seen. I, we supercharged it here in the garage, as we are. Um, and this intake came with, I had the option to get the PMAS, which was a little bit larger, or the JLT intake. I think it was a JLT Big Mouth or something that I had the option to get. But I chose this because I figured, hey, a little bit more air do a little bit better, a little bit more better, as I would say. It's been good on the car. I haven't had any major issues with it. Um, I have had one issue is that, that it caves in right here. I, I, I could say maybe the clamps would be too tight, but I've loosened the clamps up. I've, I've actually, I heated this up and bowed it back out a few times like shoving a shoe or a can or a bottle or something in here to, to open it up to actually make it the opposite of what it's doing. Um, but it's not leaking as of right now. But I do have to fix it again before we uh, do what's coming up next for the car. But we will keep you updated on that. The only other issue that I've had, like I said, was with the cover here. Anytime that I needed to move the filter or to take something off or I had to take the intake off to mess with something or, or whatever the case, I had to take these little plastic rivets, as you call them, or push pins. They were actually Phillips head, but they didn't have no bite. So I ended up having to use Phillips head screwdriver or a pick or something to, to pull them out of the hole. They just weren't straight, or I mean, excuse me, just weren't secure. Um, those are really the only issues I've had with it. It's got a little damage on it for me taking it in and out because I did have a few issues with the car when I first supercharged it, thinking that maybe the intake was the issue. Um, but it ended up being something that was turned off in the tomb. So that's uh, got that straight, straightened out. Dan over at Pro Dino in Rocky Hill, South Carolina, he helped me up with that. Uh, he's the one that's tuned this car. He's actually uh, tuned my watch car, the Shelby GT350 as well. And he will be tuning this again with the new TH400 that is in it. Unfortunately, he can't tune the new motor, but we'll get to that into another story. Let's see. How long has it been on the car since December 2018? Yeah, December 2018, the car had 23,000 miles, and it's got 29,000, so 6,000 miles, because I haven't even... I've changed the oil on the car one time since it's been supercharged. Um, so I haven't really put that many miles on it uh, since we did the supercharged upgrade. And here we are with the big, beautiful motor sitting behind the carry, which is not unwrapped. It's all nice and uh, shrink wrapped and stuff for the winter here. But the intake's done pretty good. It pulled, what, is, what was it, 675? To the wheel, yeah. To the wheel. On, on the current setup that the car has. Minus, we haven't tuned it yet for the TH400. Yeah, in the, on the, well, with the previous setup, which was the six-speed manual. Um, it was good. It's been good to the car. We're going to continue to use it. I do have a couple of changes that I'm going to do to the car before we put the new motor in. I'll make another video on that here maybe this weekend or the next couple of days or so. Um, so my question is, would you buy that intake again or would you go with the JLT? I probably wouldn't go with this this intake again just for the fact of the few issues that I've had with it. In my opinion, that it also stuffs too far down into the box because with the you would think with the panel on it here, the intake would sit right in the middle. Because if you look, the panel it's got a, a black spot on the panel that is, that's like this, so you can't see this part of the filter. So it's got a clear opening here, but the only thing you see is the coupling. And the uh, MAF sensor here in the back of the filter. You don't really see it. And I thought about maybe shortening it up, but it just wouldn't wouldn't function, I guess. Um, it would be too just, difficult to make just function. It's just not uh, eye appealing. It's a little bit of an eyesore when you pop the hood of this thing because you get a nice, beautiful car, 
carbon fiber and headlights and all done and you pop the hood and you see this nice bulky ugly filter so I might end up uh, trimming this box around to make it look just a little bit better because I don't like the way it looks under here but I, like I said I probably would go with the JLT it's still open just like this filter would be it just sits more here versus down here um, and I do have well the, the grill's not on but I had a cutout right here in the corner section of the triangle where my triangle lights were I had it cut out so it gets straight air straight into it right over here as you see my fingers um, but, but because we already have and it's already paid for it's gonna stay on the car that's it because no, we're no gonna reason, change the motor up anyways no reason to spend 600 more dollars on an intake um, just to get the same results out of a similar size in intake so we're gonna fix the little issue I have here Probably, like I said, put a bottle in it, heat it up. Excuse me, heat it up, put a bottle in it, spread it out a little bit. Because the clamp's tight. I mean, it's it's tight. And it's it's not super tight and cranked down either. I mean, I could probably pull it off. But uh, it just bows here in the middle. And you would think with it squeezing the outside, it would bow it out. But I guess there's a deformity in this one or something. Maybe it's just mine. I've seen plenty of other ones. Now, obviously, they all sit down in here. But I've seen plenty of the other ones. And they don't have this uh, issue here, so maybe it's just me. Maybe I've installed it weird. I'm not sure. It could be just a defect in the plastic on this one, too. That's it. There's a million things. We called PMOS, and they said everything was running, was doing what it should. So. Uh, that's it. But that's, that's really all I have for this intake. It's been on the car six, 7,000 miles probably. Um, two and a half years now. Two and a half years. Pulled six set and let me get 675 horsepower out of the motor to the tire on the six speed manual setup. Now, to the wheel, yeah. We are switching to, well, we've already switched over to the fully built TH400, which is going to be for the new motor. But we're going to run it on this just to see what happens. Um, like I said, more of that in another video. We'll go through a whole update list on the car and what's more to come. But I believe that's going to be it for the little uh, PMAS review overall likability or not just keep your options out there the PMAS is okay like I said it's got good airflow and good ratings but it's kind of like an eyesore that's all I got for y'all today y'all have a great night and y'all hustle harder